Let's talk about evaluating implied volatilities. Now we're not talking about how to calculate these volatilities, but rather how to evaluate a given volatility relative to its historical observations. For the purposes of this video, all of our references to volatility will be regarding option implied volatility. When we talk about historical data, it's in reference to historical readings of the forward-looking implied volatilities. Now that we got that out of the way, let's ask the obvious question. Why does volatility valuation matter? As you probably already know, implied volatility is the most efficient way of expressing the risk assigned to a given stock for a given term. That translates directly into the pricing of its options. When a volatility is higher than usual, that means that the options for that stock are more expensive than usual. They're richer. This is such an important topic in finance that many options investors purely trade the volatility. To figure out where volatility is going, it's important to step back and think about how and why it moves. The first and most important factor is a change in the perceived risk for the underlying. As major events approach, such as earnings announcements, volatility rises to account for the increase in uncertainty. Market activity, such as significant bias toward buying options, can also drive up implied volatility as the prices rise due to increased demand. However, volatility is also mean reverting. When uncertainty is cleared up, or when sellers step in to meet buyers, option prices fall, bringing volatility back to normal. Now let's dig into some of the more popular metrics used to evaluate the current implied volatility of a stock. Each of these metrics is calculated based on historical observations of a specific metric, such as the 30-day implied volatility. They also rely on a predefined time range of data, such as the trailing year of readings. Since most stocks have volatility cycles due to quarterly earnings announcements, it's important to use to at least three months of history in order to include a full cycle of volatility. We use a year of data to include four complete volatility cycles, as well as seasonal factors. All three metrics are also presented as percentages, although the exact precision isn't always critical. However, it's important to note that each of these metrics uses the historical data differently, and the results should be interpreted in a subtly different way. First up is IV rank. This metric calculates the position of the current implied volatility relative to its historical range. It answers the question, how far is the current volatility from its historical low to high? Here's an example that uses one year of historical 30-day implied volatility readings. If we convert this into a histogram, we can more easily see the range and density of the values. The range is from 21 to 46%, putting the current 38% observation toward the higher end. If we think about the full range being from the low to the high, then we can calculate that the IV rank is 60%. There are a few drawbacks to using IV rank. It doesn't account for the historical density or magnitude of past volatility moves. It can also be skewed by extreme values, resulting in misleading data. The next metric we'll look at is IV percentile. This metric stack ranks all the historical observations to determine which percentile the current value fits in at. It answers the question, what percent of historical volatilities fell below the current volatility? In this example, we can determine that 86% of past readings were below the current reading, resulting in an IV percentile of 86. This can be very useful in determining that a mean reverting volatility is likely to return to the range where the vast majority of past readings occurred. However, IV percentile does have its own weaknesses. It doesn't account for range, so it can be skewed by clusters of historical data. For example, an IV percentile of 50 may have half its readings at 5% below the current reading and the other half at 1% above. As a result, the drop opportunity would be bigger than its 50 implies. The final metric we'll look at is IV rating, a proprietary data point we have developed here at Quantia. This metric attempts to marry the strengths of IV rank and IV percentile with probability math in order to provide a clear directional indicator. It answers the question, how likely is the current volatility to drop in the near term? Returning to our example from earlier, the IV rating methodology models a probability curve for the expected volatility based on historical data. 
This accounts for the range, density, magnitude of movement, and more. For this particular history, the IV rating was calculated as having an 80% weighted probability of decline in the near term. So this leads to an obvious question. Which is the best metric to use here? The simple answer is none. Each of these metrics articulates a different aspect of volatility history. So they can be used in concert to model a view that covers range, density, and probability. The IV rank of 60 tells you that the current volatility is slightly above the middle of the historical range. The IV percentile of 86 tells you that most historical readings are below the current value. And finally, the IV rating of 80 tells you that there is significant downward pressure on the volatility in the short term. Before moving on, we need to stop to discuss a major warning. You should never forget that the implied volatility is a measure of risk. When it's relatively high, by any standard, that's because the market perceives increased risk. We've seen a lot of professional guidance that seems to imply that you should sell volatility when these metrics are high and buy it when they're low. That's not always the case. There is no free lunch in options, and selling volatility because of there's heightened risk is not always a good idea. So this might lead you to wonder why we even track these metrics. Well, it's pretty simple. They measure market sentiment. Being able to distill so much data into an easily digestible number helps you understand how the market is pricing risk for a given aspect. The true opportunity lies in them being able to identify when this sentiment is wrong because then you can capitalize on the mispriced risk. If you believe that the market is priced for too much volatility, then it makes sense to find an efficient way to sell it. That's why we've put so much work into baking these metrics into our tools over at Quantia.com. Our stock screener enables you to easily sort and filter by each of these metrics, as well as by many other fundamental and option-centric properties. Even if you're not filtering or sorting by volatility, you'll still see them on every search result. Once you've found a great candidate, you can jump into the option search to find trades at your expiration of choice. Or, if you'd like to screen for all these stocks uh, using a specific strategy, you can do that as well. All of our trade screeners support these same metrics so you can easily refine your search criteria to zero in on the exact trade you want. You can also include these metrics in your long-term view of each stock. Here you can see that all three of these metrics being laid out over the expiration map that we have here in our expiration view. You can also include data like volatilities, forward prices, and put call ratios to get a full picture. We also provide these metrics via our APIs, so you can integrate them into your personal and professional tools. Each data point is generated from a full year of history for each of the 30, 60, 90, and 360 day implied volatility terms. That's a total of 12 data points for over 4,000 stocks with history back to 2010. So to sum up, be sure to make use of these major metrics for evaluating volatility. IV rank covers you for range, IV percentile covers you for density, and IV rating covers you for probability. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below or hit us up at hello at As always, good luck and good hunting.